Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The hour is 7 o'clock, and as mayor, I hereby call to order the March 14, 2016 meeting of the Laconia City Council. As always, we'll begin our meeting tonight with a salute to our American flag. I would ask you to please rise and join Councilor Armin Bullock in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yeah. Note for the record that the minutes to tonight's meeting are being kept by City Clerk Mary Reynolds, and I would ask that she please call the roll. Councilor Doyle. Here. Councilor Hedman. Here. Councilor Baer. Present. Councilor Hamill. Here. Councilor Baldwin. Here. Deputy Mayor Edward Angley. Present. Let the record show that five councilors are present to this evening, and that establishes a quorum for tonight's meeting. I uh, would also note for the record that the council is joined at the front table tonight <coughs> by City Manager Scott Myers and by the C City Finance Director Donna Woodman. First order of regular business is the acceptance of minutes from previous meeting and on tonight's agenda would be the minutes for February 22nd which were previously submitted to the council and I think there was one minor correction as I recall made on these already so so the question would be tonight then are the, do the counselors have any further corrections to make to those minutes if not I will declare for the records that the minutes of our meeting on February 22nd 2016 are approved as amended thank you <coughs> consent and action calendar <coughs> so, uh, remind everyone that these are typically items that are on our agenda for quick approval because they are repeat requests from previous years uh, that have been resubmitted without change uh, we have five such requests tonight before us the first one is on page five of your packet and it is a temporary traffic order 2016-03 for a penny patu travel blood drive to be held on april 20th 2016 that requires temporary traffic orders with regard to beacon street east is there a motion to approve this request for temporary traffic order moved by councillor boldick seconded by councillor hamill any discussion of that request all those in favor of approving this temporary traffic order, please raise a hand. The five votes in the affirmative, and that is approved. Next up, we have four requests to raise funds on city property that have come to us pre-approved by the Parks and Recreation Commission. The first of which is from the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer, uh, which is planning once again to have their annual uh, walk be headquartered in Opeachy Park in October 12 13 14 and 16 are the dates and a motion would be in order to approve that request for use of Opeachy Park Councillor Bullock seconded by Councillor Doyle any discussion about uh, the making strides request all those in favor please raise a hand thank you five votes in the affirmative and that passes the next one is for the Evangelical Baptist Church they are requesting once again to use Peachy Park, I believe, for a soccer camp that they have used, that they have uh, done in previous years. Yes, on goal soccer camp, and a motion would be in order to approve that request to hold a soccer camp in in the Peachy Park. Levitt Park. Huh? Levitt. Sorry, Levitt Park. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilor Hamill makes that motion, seconded by Councilor Bullock. Any discussion of the request to use Levitt Park for a soccer camp for the Evangelical Baptist Church? All those in favor, please raise a hand. We have five <coughs> votes in the affirmative, and that is request. Next up is Lakes Region Community Services. And I believe that request is to use the Wow Trail for a walk to, to raise money to fight autism. Yes. And that request is also in your packet plan for Sunday, September 18th. 
Uh, is there a motion to approve that request? So moved. That's by Councillor Boldick, second by Councillor Hamill. All right. So we have a request before us from the Lakes Union Community Services Autism Center to host a September 18th event on the WOW Trail. Um, all those in favor, please raise a hand. Thank you. Five votes in the affirmative, and that is also approved. Lastly, we have a request from Lakes Region Girls Softball, an annual request to raise funds at o the Opeachy Park concession stand from June 24th through June 26th, 2016, and July 8th through July 10th from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. for concessions in Opeachy Park. That motion was made by Councilor Bullock, seconded by Councilor Doyle. And any questions or comments? All those in favor of approving that request from Girls Softball, please raise a hand. Thank you. We have five votes in the affirmative, and that request is also approved. Next up is citizen comments for matters not on the agenda. This is the appropriate time in our meeting for anyone who wishes to address council tonight on any matter that is not on tonight's agenda. Mrs. Clark. Good evening. Nice to see you. Thank you. Um, I'm here with my uh, president of the Laconia Historical and Museum Society hat on. Um, I wanted to bring to the council's attention that in 10 days and two years will be the 125th anniversary of the city of Laconia. And I would like the city to celebrate that. Um, I think it'll take, if to do it right, I think it would take a couple of years to um, get it organized. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that by 2018, the Colonial Theater will be up and running. That will be a, a nice addition to the celebration. Um, I, I've heard that there's in the works um, designing a new city flag that gives that time for that to happen as well. Um, I would like a citizens committee formed and I'm hoping that we will have representation from Lakeport and the Weirs as well as uh, Laconia. Um, to start with, we probably would only need to maybe meet once a month until we get going a little further. But I know things like if we wanted to get a name entertainment to come, we would probably have to reserve that at least a year in advance. Um, I want to be able to have some kinds of souvenirs designed, and I'm not talking shot glass, I'm talking <laughs> nice souvenirs that people would like to hang on to. I actually brought um, a couple of things from the 75th anniversary to share. Some of you have not been here the past 25 years. There were a series of six plates that were done. Um, in for 1968 of course that uh, 75th anniversary was before urban renewal um, this this particular plate happens to be the Mount Washington uh, this one was the the Moulton Opera House and this one was the Buzzio Mill so another 50 years in the future we may choose some different things although um, the mills are still important, the railroad station, things like that. So, I, you know, I'm not saying to design plates, but I'm just saying, you know, it would be nice to have time to come up with souvenir designs. Of course, there would need to be some kind of a budget over the next two years because we will want, of course, to do fireworks. Um, like I say, the entertainment, the souvenirs that we'd have to buy up front, but the city would gain money back from the sale of those. Um, let's see, what else did I want to say? Uh, the Citizens Committee I see being broken down into um, different sections, like a parade committee, subcommittee, uh, uh, entertainment subcommittee, um, the souvenir subcommittee and things like that and those people could you know meet whatever they wanted to meet and then just have a representative from those committees maybe meet once a month or something 
Uh, that's kind of what I've got visioned in my mind at this point. When um, would you see the committee being formed or what date by? Well, I know we've got Easter coming up in the next couple of weeks, so I was thinking maybe into April, so like maybe in three three weeks or so to get the, you know, the word out and uh, we have to decide on a place and hopefully there'll be, you know, council representatives on the, uh, the committee as well. And I don't know what the Belknap Mill, would that be the best place to meet size-wise or depending on... From a budget standpoint, we would be talking about something uh, proposed for the two th fiscal year 2017 budget, I would presume. Uh, there would be a special item or something or other in there for that. And I wouldn't have any idea how much to ask for. Uh, so um, the committee would have to be... That's the reason I bring it up. The right. committee would have to be working fairly quickly in that regard because mm -hmm. that budget will have to be is usually approved in early July. That would Could certainly give us time. Year, yeah. But, yeah. but uh, um, and do you see, are you requesting that the council appoint that committee? Um, well, I, I guess it's more... <laughs> The council's blessing and the council to be involved um, on, you know, s some people. I mean, I see Weirs, I see Lakeport, you know, various sections of the, the community. So have you started drafting a membership? Well, I kind of have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I kind of have. drag this out of here. Yes. <laughs> So you already know who's going to be on well, the committee. Well, <laughs> no, I mean, there's a lot more that I can put on the list, but, you know, I'm looking at the Downtown Association, uh, you know, uh, different <coughs> civic groups and things like that. So, and, you know, any citizen that would have an interest in helping. So, so I guess we would need... So this would be a, a committee of the Historical and Museum Society? Not necessarily I, I think of it as more of a citizen committee than just because it's going to be a, a you know larger I hope a larger well, entity. I'm, ju I'm just thinking out loud in terms of an appropriation who who looking at the city manager now who would, who we would make an appropriation to or who that would be a we could just put a line item in just for a 125th celebration and, and just keep it internally and then determine you know how the funds would be expended from it okay and it could be certainly could be carried over into 2018 whatever mm. funds aren't used next year and we may need to come for further in 2018 okay well why don't uh, I would suggest maybe that we uh, um, have a brief discussion of this at our next meeting perhaps we could put it on the agenda absolutely under new business mm -hmm. and kick around some ideas and and maybe you could give us in the meantime t that's two weeks from today mm -hmm. you could give us a uh, a draft of the committee that you've come up with and whatnot just okay to give us give us an idea of size and maybe what different committees there mm -hmm. might be that mm -hmm. sort of thing i can do that and then we could uh, we could have that in front of us at uh, the meeting two weeks from now and go okay. from there. So that's pretty exciting, and and uh, I hope so. <laughs> we just uh, we just talked about it a few weeks ago at this table because uh, the city clerk had showed me the minutes to the first city council meeting on that day. Uh, it was pretty exciting to see that the handwritten minutes to that very first city council meeting uh, in 1893. What was the official date? March 24th. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't remember it. Yeah. Uh, and. I what I can see happening in 2018, kind of like what happened uh, in 1993, um, that we would celebrate on March 24th with a city council meeting, but maybe have the affair in the summertime. So I guess the centennial one was done around the 4th of July. I mean, we could do it then or later in the summer you know w that would be something the committee would want to decide on as well so. okay very good uh we'll discuss this again in two weeks then okay. on the agenda thank All you right, thank, thank you. you any questions for miss clark while she's here
Thank you. Anyone else have anything to address the council about on an item that is not on tonight's agenda? No. Okay, interviews. We have two interviews tonight. Uh, the first one is for Nadine L. Jordan. Ms. Jordan, could you step forward, please? Uh, Ms. Jordan, there is, there is, on the Library Board of Trustees, there are two vacancies for alternate positions, and Ms. Jordan has applied for one of those positions. So welcome to you, and if you could uh, tell us where you live and, and why you'd like to serve on the Library Board, please. Uh, I live in Laconia with my daughter and her husband and my grandson. Um, I grew up around books. I go to the library all the time. I work on some nonprofits. My kids take care of me, so I have the opportunity to do a lot of things I want to do now. And I'd like to learn more about the library. And my mother was a book dealer. My sister is a library director in Florida. And it's just kind of a family thing. And I want my kid, my grandchildren, ten of them, to learn to love books. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Any questions or comments for? Jordan? Where in Laconia do you live? Up on Mile Hill. Mile Hill, so that's Ward 4? Ward, Ward, Ward 4. Ward 4, four yeah. Your sheet. Anyone else? Okay. Um, the uh, way we handle appointments like this by by uh, council rules is we do our interviews at one meeting and we actually make appointments at the following meeting. Okay. Uh, it is not necessary for you to come to the following meeting. I think if we'd had questions, we would have asked you tonight. <coughs> and and But you're welcome to if you like. Okay. But we will take up the actual appointment at our next meeting. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up, uh, Hamilton McLean. Is Mr. McLean with us tonight? Yes. Mr. McLean is seeking reappointment as the planning board's representative to the Lakes Region Planning Commission to a four-year term expiring at the end of March 2020. Welcome, Mr. McLean. Thank you. And uh, Mr. McLean's application was not in your packet tonight but was distributed tonight separately so that's if I could call your attention to that and uh, also if you could tell us where in Laconia you live and why you'd like to serve again sure I'm in Ward 1 in South Down Shores in 19 Lantern Circle uh, I've been here with my wife this will be our third year um, we have been up in the Lakes region for probably the past 15 or 16 years we have a home up in uh, Moultonboro um, I uh, work on the leadership team at the uh, Commissioner's Office of the Department of Environmental Services in Concord. Um, I have uh, started my second term on the City Planning Board, and I've had uh, a fair amount of experience in zoning, uh, conservation, and planning boards in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, and now in New Hampshire. So I'd like to serve again. Uh, I'd like to look at a um, a slightly larger context and I think the Lakes Region Planning Commission gives me that opportunity. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Mr. McLean or comments? Thank you for coming forward. I'm in. Okay. Yeah, we absolutely appreciate you uh, being willing to serve. Thank you very much. Thank and you. As I said earlier, we'll take up this appointment at our next meeting. Thank you. Public hearings. We have two public hearings tonight and would we'll turn your attention to page 25 of your packet for the first one not used to the usual packets here so yeah. give me a minute to catch yeah. up with where we're, we're so well organized switching now, now. <laughs> I'm over organized here <laughs> switching back and forth okay the actual resolution is on page 73 of your packet
can't believe. <clears throat> yes. So this is we're we're dealing tonight with resolution 2016-03, a resolution relative to authorizing the city managers to do, to accept donations on behalf of the city, and this has to do with a Department of Environmental Services diver diver assisted suction harvesting dash grant in the amount of six thousand six hundred and forty dollars for an aquatic exotic aquatic plant control project in langley molten and pickle coves off of Pogus bay and so we're going to hold a public hearing and i will announce that notice of that public hearing i think i have that wording somewhere in front of me here Ms. Reynolds, can you help me out here? What am I missing? I'm page 25, Mr. Mayor. Page 25? Yep. yep, under discussion. Well, he's already gone there. Yeah. He's looking for the notice. Okay, yes, I'm sorry. Page 25. All right, notice of this public hearing was made in the Friday, February 26, 2016 edition of the Laconia Daily Sun. It was also posted at City Hall, the Gale Memorial Library, the Laconia Community Center, and the offices of the Laconia School District. A second reading of this resolution is scheduled for this evening under in unfinished business. Copies of the resolution were made available to the public in the City Clerk's Office. So I will call this uh, hearing to order at 23 minutes after 7 and ask if there's anyone who would like to address the council tonight on the subject of this Department of Environmental Services grant for $6,640 to in effect fight milfoil on three coves off of Pogus Bay. Anyone? Okay, I will close the hearing at 624. 724 I'm sorry and again <coughs> repeat that we will take this matter up uh, tonight later under unfinished business okay our second public hearing I believe the resolution itself is on page 75 in your packets, uh, an ordinance amending Chapter 235 zoning pertaining to off-street parking and loading requirements, driveways, and access. Notice of this public hearing was made in the Friday, February 26, 2016 edition of the Citizen Newspaper. It was also posted at City Hall, the Gale Memorial Library, the Laconia Community Center, and the offices of the Laconia School District. Approval of this ordinance amendment is scheduled for this evening under unfinished business. Copies of the ordinance were made available to the public in the City Clerk's Office. So I will open this hearing at 725 and I ask if there's anyone tonight who would like to address the issue of amending article 3 of chapter 235 of the zoning ordinance as it pertains to off-street parking and loading requirements driveways and access and I believe the previous explanation we were given correct me if I'm wrong was to bring our current statute our own ordinance in line with state law correct okay anyone on this subject Okay, I'm going to close the hearing then at 26 minutes past 7 and again remind everyone that we'll be taking this issue up tonight again under unfinished business. Presentations. We're due for a presentation tonight from the Happy Tales Dog Park Organization. And I believe Miss Jenny Martin is supposed to be here tonight. Yes. Hi. Welcome. Good evening. I am a Laconia resident. I live on Harvest Lane in South Down Shores, and I'm also the president of this organization called the Happy Tales Dog Park of the Lakes Region. 
Um, the group was founded in 2008 by some people in the Belmont area, and they originally had found some land in Belmont. This is just a bit of history of the group. Um, and that land deal fell through. So um, I became president of the group two years ago, and we are have previously in 2013, um, someone had been in front of the council and various other boards presenting the um, conceptual plan for the dog park, which I believe you have the handouts from that as part of your package. So it's been in the planning stages and we've been raising funds. And um, so the, um, we've had, we have about, um, let's see, we are a 501c3 charitable organization. Um, we have a website and a Facebook page and we have 330 people on a mailing list or an email list that is and we have almost 500 likes on our Facebook page so um, we have a fairly active community that's interested in seeing the dog park in this area excuse me could I interrupt you for just a second sure. could you pull the microphone closer to you please oh yeah I forgot I don't talk very loud thank you is that better yep okay um, so at the time um, Okay, part of this concept plan that's in your package is the design layout, which was done as a concept. And uh, the various groups that we talked to back in 2013 had, um, were, showed interest in the plan and uh, gave us a preliminary approval to keep, keep working on coming up with the money for this park. So, um, We've been raising uh, money. We had uh, various fundraisers last year, including a table at the Bow Wow Fest. Uh, we had a table with mugs and coasters for sale at the coffee festival. We participated in the pumpkin festival to help with the parking. And we've had some tables at Petco to spread the word about the group. Um, so right now we have just under five thousand dollars in the account but we have received a donation from or we've received the notice of a, that we would be getting a donation f from someone um, that would fund the park to the extent that our pre estimate was of what we needed to get it built um, so we're ready at this point. We've had um, John Rokey is an engineer that's been working on the design plan for us on his own time, which was how we were able to go ahead with it before we got this donor money. And um, that's going to be finalized shortly. And we plan to go in front of the planning board um, to get final approval so that the dog park could be started this year. So, um, so I'm here to update you on it because, um, well, I know that, that there could be people on the, on the council that weren't here for the previous uh, presentation. And the land that is proposed for this is land that was, is owned by the Parks and Recreation Department, known as the Spruce Street lot. And it is uh, on Growth Road near Scotia Technologies. Um, so we would l like to come up with an agreement with the city for the e uh, to be able to use that land for the dog park. And I've been working with Kevin Dunlevy on this. Um, and we would like to start the construction. Um, the park would be on city land, but it would be maintained and managed by m our group, the Happy Tales Dog Park. And there would be, um, 
you know, maintenance activities that we would participate in and fund for years, um, including we'd have a porta potty that would need to be emptied and dumpster and um, maintaining the area, dog waste containers, things like that. So that would, um, we're also managing the um, construction of it, hiring various contractors um, with the assistance of John Rokey, the engineer. Um, oh yes, and it would include insurance for the park. So, um, you know, in, in the handout that you received, there's um, some information about surrounding communities and dog parks that already exist. And there's two new ones. I can add to that. Um, there's a new one in Enfield that just opened the past year. And there's one in Merrimack that's being built. Um, We've had a lot of people that come to this area from other parts of the country that are used to going to dog parks with their dogs. And they're very disappointed to find out that this one doesn't exist yet. So um, I think it's, it's uh, good to be able to move forward with this. Um, I believe that we're going to have the engineering design plan done to submit an application in April to the planning board and um, would hope to get the approvals that we need so that we could start construction at the end of May or beginning of June and open the park at some time late summer, all pending what <laughs> happens with construction. Um, Sorry, happens with what? Construction, okay. you know, as long as there's no unanticipated delays. Um, so um, I'm here to ask if, if anyone here has any general concerns about the park that I could answer for you. <coughs> Questions? Councilor Hamill. Uh, just curious, uh, what is your, uh, what's your anticipated yearly cost of maintaining that? Uh, it's between 1500 and 2000 a year. It's not, uh, we're not going to have grasslands. It's going to be, it's in the woods right now, and we're going to maintain that as um, a rustic kind of location, so it'll be cleared out of brush, but there'll still be a lot of trees. So we're not anticipating growing grass there, so there wouldn't be lawn to mow. There might be a small area which could be maintained by volunteers even. Um, so really, there's not a lot of continuing expenses. There's no water and no electricity. Hey, um, <clears throat> with these other parks that are built now, mm -hmm. have you heard any um, problems with uh, people that go there that might have gotten bit by other dogs and what liability have occurred with those situations, <coughs> if there are any? Um, we have discussed this, and um, I have been in contact with some of the other parks in the area, and um, that's always a concern, um, but one of the regulations is that the dogs need to behave, and that we'll ask people to leave the park if their dog is seen as a danger. Um, as far as getting bit, it would be the same as any other park in the town, people could, could contact the police about it, but it's a self-regulated park and that the people who are going to it will be asked to help maintain it and make sure that, that uh, proper behavior of the dogs. Is, is there staff that's going to be there at the time of operation? The whole not time? not all, totally at the beginning. There, there will be a lot of staff in and out. How would you know if a dog's aggressive? Well, like I said, it would be self-policing. The people there would have to police themselves, and if they can't, they call the police. Staff? Staff meaning volunteers? Yes. Sorry. Right. Councilor Bullock? Yes. Uh, would this be open in the winter? My understanding is most of the dog parks are actually open part of the winter, and then they close 
but for periods if it's too deep or too icy. Um, we had talked originally about not being open in the winter. Um, so that's something that I don't think we've decided on. So all of this would be maintained by your group? The city wouldn't be involved in plowing roads? Or right. <coughs> Um, Council Scott, would you have a record of the last time this group was here? It seems to me I remember that the council approved of the project, but it was pending on raising funds. I didn't know if you had any of the records. I do. So included in your packet, we did have the minutes from July 22nd, 2013. But I think most of you were on the council at that time. Um, so concerns were there. Also included in your packet, uh, this group has gone before Technical Review Committee, Conservation Commission is, is uh, weighed in, zoning, um, planning. So they've gone through uh, a number of these uh, city boards, if you will, for review and concerns <coughs> out there. Uh, also in here is a, is a template of an insurance indemnification policy that I believe was from the city of Manchester that is fairly standard for um, dog parks to have to, for protection. Um, and there are model examples. I think there's an example in here of the agreement between a group and a municipality. And, and those are fairly standard with every dog park that has that type of partnership across the state. And they've been very successful. And typically it is um, the volunteers who step up to do the maintenance and, and raise the ongoing funds. Um, so I think if I can paraphrase back in 2013, it was conceptually it was okay. We want to know where you're going to get the funds to build it and how it's going to be maintained going forward. Um, if I can, Mr. Mayor, I can share some additional information that I received in the last couple of days regarding the uh, donation that Ms. Martin spoke of. Sure. Um, thank you. So uh, the family name I'll get to at the end, but um, this local family is prepared to invest $50,000 to complete the park and an additional $50,000 into a trust fund, the income of which would provide for park maintenance. Um, so that is really a significant um, donation on, on behalf of this family. Any amount of money that, left that was left over from the building fund would also be placed in the trust fund. In the event that no organization takes responsibility for continuing maintenance of the park or the city changes its use from a park, any amount then left in the trust fund only would be returned back to the family. Uh, they do go on to say that they would like to have it stay as a public park. If for some reason a dog park didn't work out, they're open to some other kind of a, uh, a, a public park area with the trust fund remaining um, intact. And again, that's a, uh, it's a very generous offer. Um, the, the family name is the Lazama family who have local ties for many, many years here uh, in Laconia. Um, and the request would be something to include the family name into the naming of the park. So it would be the, for, for instance, uh, the Lazama family Happy Tales Dog Park of the Lakes region or something along those lines. Um, but it is a significant um, donation um, that we certainly would work to structure legally um, to, you know, to uh, be able to have Happy Tales be able to utilize it, to have the city be protected, have it properly set up as a trust, um, and also protect the family sh to return the funds if for some reason um, the area ceased to be a park. So um, that's new information that just came in as recently as today. And what, what is your construction estimate? Around 50000 So, okay. So, may I, I'm sorry, let me, anyone else have some questions? I had some, some uh, logistical questions here. Um, looking at your site plans. Oh, it's, uh, sorry, but uh, my name's John Rokey. I'm actually the guy that's been working with, with them on that. Okay. And the, uh, the construction stuff, uh, I've been actually trying to minimize some of that. I've, uh, I've convinced Steve Smith to give me some topo of the area that he had, and uh, I had a wetland scientist go out there and help me out with it, and uh, there's there's no wetlands on site. So what I've done, it, the, the plan that you have in your package is pushing it d towards the, the actual final design. I've, I've worked out some of the details. It's not actually graded out. The drainage calcs aren't done, things like that. But it's uh, it's kind of going that direction, and I've been talking with uh, all the departments as I'm moving it forward a little bit. Like I've, while I'm at other meetings, I've been picking <coughs> people's brain on it, and uh, I, I I'm, we're getting towards uh, what we're going to be submitting to 
uh, planning for the official TRC review and planning review process. So, and I've, I've been able to do it with a gravel road, uh, no detention structures. So I'm trying to minimize the maintenance on the site for the going forward um, and keep construction costs down by basically just moving dirt around and not having to do a lot of structures. So uh, it'll be pretty maintenance free with the way I'm trying to put it together. All right. So, so we're, we're, we're accessing this off of Growth Road, yes. off the dead end of Growth Road. Yep. And uh, I think we all know that immediately upon right off that right off that dead end, there's a power easement there. Yes. Yep. So you would start right on the other side of the power easement. Yeah. What uh, the original the original concept from like 2013 uh, actually had the parking lot under the power lines. And we did a little troubleshooting with that, and uh, it's going to be a lot easier to get a joint use agreement to just go through the power line with the driveway and have all the improvements past it. So uh, my plan is actually extended the road a little bit to get outside of the power easement for the main part of the right, So park. explain the parking lot itself then, please. Uh, basically, you, you come off of Growth Road, you go, you go past the power line. It, it's actually it's all kind of downhill away from Growth Road. So you'll get past the power lines, and I'm basically going to I'm going to level out a spot, move, just move the dirt around to it, get a level spot, and then the uh, the actual pen areas can set at whatever level that they'll be actually a little bit lower than the parking lot, and I'm going to have swales going around both both sides. But what is the surface of the parking lot? Uh, gravel. Gravel. Gravel parking. So lot. you are going to gravel. That. Yes, it's going to be a graveled surface. Yes. Okay. It'll be basically like you're building a road to pave it, but you just don't put the pavement on. Okay. Yep. So that the access road will be the same construction. Same thing. Yes. Yep. And It'll you can be do all, all that for fifty thousand dollars. By just by that's what I'm trying. I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. If I would have put it, if I would have put a lot of detention structures in and things like that, it definitely wouldn't have. But that's that's what I've been working on, trying to minimize okay. things. So <laughs> gravel parking lot and then yep. some gravel pathways. Yep. Gravel pathways leading to the pins themselves. Yep. And I'm assuming that the numbers on these, as far as size, are feet, not yards. Yes. Uh, feet for the uh, pin. Yes. Seventy-eight feet by one hundred and thirty feet. Yes. Okay. Yep. <coughs> and and trees will be preserved in that pen area as well. Uh, probably not within the pen area. The the circles that I have in there are maybe some uh, shrub plantings that'll cut once it's all kind of cleared out. Then we'll put some we'll put some shrubs back in, but nothing uh, nothing. No large trees are going to be back going back in. All right. In so what is the surface there? Sand. It's kind of sandy right now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The dirt work is the dirt work will be easy. That's part of what will help keep the cost down. But uh, it'll be a matter of just kind of finalizing things out, the landscaping and everything. So else. I would say from observation that in terms of in terms of whatever the city how the city would finalize its legal arrangement here, this entire complex accounts for a relatively small portion Very. of the so-called yeah. um, we're at Spruce uh, Street track. You're just really taking we're one We're really only at about two acres, if that, and the parcel is 20 acres. Yeah. So it's yeah. We're a very small part. So the agreement would not have to, would only have to cover the two acres, not the, not the yep. remaining land. <coughs> Councilor Hamill. Uh, just curious, uh, where this goes back, do you, how far back, in, in the, are there any residents along here that would uh, abut there, this? There would be to the west. Uh, there, there, there are there are both ways, but they're they're quite a ways out. Do you have the do you have the original? Well, the west uh, would be all the way down to Spruce Street. Yeah, well, that's, that's a long way. No, no, there's Providence there's Street. there's some on both sides too. Providence on the original Street. on the original concept plan, there was a little bit more zoom back version. You can oh, see on a Providence bit Street. Of you've got the cemetery, St. Lambert Cemetery, but yes, most of that so tract. Long. And then there's a yeah. uh, there's a gravel pit, yeah. an active gravel pit. Yeah, you can actually see a little bit better now. We can pass this around a little bit. Yeah, I think There's I got that. There's a sand pit there, cemetery there. So nothing oh, on okay. this side. This is all pretty much industrial. So these are the closest houses this way, and that's a pretty huge lot in the corner. It would be uh, Opal Lane. Oh, that's Lane. off of Opal, Emerald? Emerald and Opal Lane. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. On the north. Yeah. Yeah. Being a gravel parking lot, how are the guys going to park there and be... 
park the right way. There's there's not going to be a lot of different ways to park. It's going to be it's going to be head in parking to both sides with an aisle down the middle. And uh, I I got uh, nine I got like 19 spaces. Mm -hmm. I don't know that there'd be that many people there at any given time. So even if they're off a little bit, they'd probably everybody would probably fit pretty well. <coughs> You haven't had any neighbors complain or anything about it. They have, do they know about it or? I don't know if there's actually been a uh, public hearing where neighbors were noticed yet. Um, I, I don't know on that. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we uh, going through the planning board. Sorry, Kevin Dunlevy, director of Parks and Recreation. Uh, uh, through the planning board process, all the butters would be notified, so they'd have an opportunity to weigh in. So uh, uh, through that process, we would have. Uh, uh, address any concerns. Uh, I know uh, I had been approached, uh, I think back in 2013, uh, Gilbert Block owns a parcel there and they, uh, uh, they had some questions about um, what was going to be happening and how it might affect their property. Uh, that's the only thing I remember from many abutters. And just for clarification, uh, this parcel was uh, purchased uh, through an LWCF grant for, and it is designated for uh, city parkland. Uh, nothing's ever been developed. There has never been a master plan for this property. Uh, so it's not surplus land, it's actually dedicated for parkland. So this would be an appropriate use for, for that property. So question to the manager, what would be the next step from a, from the city council standpoint on this? Some sort of a lease agreement or? I, I think just because we had a presentation tonight, I would recommend that we place this as a formal agenda item in two weeks and talk about a conditional approval subject to oh. appropriate uh, completion of a, of a lease agreement um, so, you know, uh, that's acceptable to the city in condition on meeting, uh, getting planning board review and approval and uh, conditions of approval from the planning board. So I think we can put that on for uh, two weeks if the council is looking to go that route. Councilor Lemon. Um, not to make it overly complex, but just in terms of what assurance that the budget that they have to work with can complete the project. Like, you know, if we end up with a two thirds of a park as opposed to a full park kind of situation. Uh, and, and we can certainly, you know, indicate that the funds are in place and that we've got a construction estimate before we go forward. Uh, again, where I think this is more rustic and natural in nature is talking about shaping a road and, and putting in a base to it, putting in gravel for parking, you know, clearing some trees and putting some fencing into it. So I think it's, you know, if, if something were to come up, I don't think it's in a location <coughs> that's going to be a major eyesore or, or be a hazard or, or you know. So the roadway itself would be a private drive? Uh, it would still be on the city land, is my understanding, um, but they would be constructing it privately, and it would not be meant to be a um, a true public road, but more of a, uh, a driveway access into a parking area. Would we be expected park. to maintain it? No, the expectation is that the Dog Park Association so We maintain to the end of Growth Road. And we, we plow there and maintain to the end of Growth Road right now anyway. Okay, any other questions, comments? All right, well, we thank you for your presentation and uh, we'll put us on the agenda for our next meeting then. Okay, I had one question. When, the, when you asked about the trees, if there would be trees in the, in the pens. Yes. Um, is that a concern if there were? In the pen? Right. Because I was thinking of possibly seeing if we could leave a few well, I trees thought you would imply shade, there would be so. trees. I know it's I know, heavily I was, wooded now. I was shaking I, my head as he was going. No, oh, that's so. fine. The, the, yeah. we have, the we plan have didn't show any trees. That's right, why I right. asked. I haven't finalized yet, so that's something yeah, we this will is, definitely work on. Yeah, the uh, main reason that, that he's redrawn this plan was to get the parking lot out of the easement because um, I did t speak with Eversource last fall about that and they recommended that we it would be a much easier process for us if we moved the parking lot out and they just had to do access so that's why we did that well thank you very much okay. thank you. you're welcome thank you for coming okay on to the mayor's report um, 
few quick things here. One, I um, wanted to uh, call everyone's attention to the fact that uh, tomorrow is the open house at the uh, fire station, the new renovated expanded fire station on North Main Street, and I believe the hours are 3 to 6 p.m. We're doing 3 to 7 for the open house to and seven. tours available in the... And then we're going to have a ceremony at 5 o'clock. Correct. That's our call. Okay. We look forward to seeing everyone there. And uh, so everyone in the city has a perfect opportunity tomorrow from 3 to 7 p.m. to take a tour of their new fire station. And appreciate that. And we all look forward to that. Secondly, I would... Uh, I noticed... Uh, just the other day that uh, Mayor Seymour's portrait is up in the hallway there. I call everyone's attention to that. After all these years, we were, apparently there was a hard, we had a hard time getting a picture of him without a beard. I was going to say, with or without? <laughs> so, so it delayed his, uh, his uh, uh, portrait from getting in its appropriate place in the hallway here at City Hall, and that has finally been accomplished, and it is a fine portrait, so I call everyone's attention to that, and it's, a, I think, a wonderful tradition here in the city, and, and, and happy to see uh, him join the ranks of former mayors uh, on that wall. Uh, that, uh, not too many steps down, includes former Mayor Boldick's portrait as well. So. Um, lastly, I wanted to report uh, to the council that since our last meeting and per an item that occurred at our last meeting, uh, we have had a meeting, um, I say we, Councilor Hamill, uh, myself and the city manager had a meeting with Mitch Hamill, the chairman of the Parks and Recreation Commission, and Kevin Dunleavy, the director of the Parks and Rec Commission. Um, with regard to specific issues that came up with, uh, during the presentation from the muskrats management at our last meeting and more in general in terms of, of uh, a review of procedures and policies regarding what items that the, the Parks and Rec Commission handles that also come to the City Council for approval. And uh, I think it was a very open and honest meeting and, and uh, 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 very productive. And I think as a result of that, the, the, uh, for one thing, we reviewed the code currently, the city code, which the council could change, uh, which, which dictates, if you will, what items supposedly come to the council for approval and which can be approved. But by the by the Parks and Rec Commission itself and there are definitely some gray areas there so what's going to happen here in a general sense now as a result of that meeting is that the Parks and Recreation Commission is going to study all of the issues uh, in terms of general policies and procedures that came out of that meeting and they are charged with coming back to the council probably in June of this year with a list of of observations and recommendations of possible changes to that code and procedure. Uh, in, in a general sense, uh, what was discussed there was that there seemed to be some incongruity in the way things are currently organized in that some very minor things, one could argue, do come to the council for approval that seemingly don't, wouldn't need to. Somebody wants to sell popcorn at Opeachy Park and we have to approve that. But on the other hand, there was a five-year lease signed with an outside tenant on, on and, and according to their interpretation of the current code, that didn't need to come to the council for approval and didn't. So those kinds of issues are all going to be discussed by them, and they're going to come back for recommendations from us. And I think, I think they'll, one of the things they'll probably recommend is, is some level or definition of when something, regardless of what it's about, doesn't rise to the level where it really needs city council approval. And that would probably cover many items that are on our consent and action calendar. Buttered popcorn, even? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. So. Um, so we'll look forward to that in probably in June in terms of coming back from them to hopefully simpl simplify and further explain the relationship between the two boards. As far as the muskrats in particular are concerned, a couple of things I would note from that meeting. One is that uh, one important uh, order of business 
uh, pending now in terms of the muskrats for this coming season is whether or not they will be allowed to sell beer at uh, Robbie Mills Field. And we do have an understanding with the, with the Parks and Rec chairman and with the director that that uh, that decision will come to the city council for approval so they will probably approve that or not approve it at their next meeting if they do approve it that that will come um, because the beer isn't obviously being given away it's going to be sold so that will come to city council for final approval on that front as far as the contract with the the uh, for the the the, the uh, lease um, there, there was some confusion <laughs> about the, the, even the existence of the legal document that I showed at the last meeting, and and uh, so there. Anyway, the chairman of the commission is now aware that that document exists, and that it needs to be formally amended, and and it has not been formally amended, and it needs to be formally amended in terms of the the, the and and that and that they need perhaps to fully understand who exactly it is they have a formal contract with and and what the legalities of all that are uh, so they will be uh, taking it upon themselves to formalize that uh, uh, in the next month or so and uh, we'll get that done and then and then uh, I'm assuming that the the in terms of where we go from here on items of that kind I'm assuming that part of the recommendations and observations <coughs> that come from them in June will be a recommendation on their part as to how future agreements of that kind, long-term leases of city property and whatnot, should be handled between the two organizations. So, we'll, uh, all of this in the end is is covered by city code, which we control, and the, the wording on and whatnot. So that'll all at some point come back to us for approval. So anyway, it was a very good meeting and, and appreciated those two gentlemen uh, joining us for that conversation and I think it was uh, very fruitful. Committee reports. I know we had a meeting tonight of the Government Operations and Ordinances Committee with regard to item D on their agenda, leasing of city-owned dock space in the Weirs. Councilor Hamill or Councilor Doyle, I'm sorry, could you give us a report on that? We did meet and um, <clears throat> The basically we came out of the meeting in agreement that we're not going we're not going to recommend any changes at this time. We discussed it. Um, there's such limited dock space down there that we feel leaving it it needs to be left for recreational purposes. So the recommendation actually we don't have to do we don't have to do anything. Don't have then. to do anything. No, no. Okay. And I'd like to make a motion to remove that from the agenda, please. <coughs> I'm sorry, you're making a motion to what? To remove that item D okay, from the agenda, please. Mm -hmm. All right, so Councilor Doyle makes a motion to remove item D from the from the um, agenda of the Government Operations and Ordinance Committee, second by Councilor Boldick. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise a hand. Five in the affirmative, and that motion is approved and item D is dispensed with. So we appreciate your committee <coughs> getting into that right away and and uh, taking care of that. Are there any other questions that we'd like to ask, <coughs> Councilor Hamill? Well, I, I have a question of the government operations. Uh, n item B, uh, procedural review of grant applications. Uh, has that uh, has that been taken up at all yet? No. Okay. It has not. We're still waiting, aren't we? We're working no, through we some think. litigation right now and it's still on, a, pending on a separate that. issue dealing with the Attorney General's office, so we're looking to not muddy the waters until a couple of those get some clarification. Okay. But uh, d just to continue, in the meantime, we are scheduling the public hearings on any dollar amount and going through the full process. Um, yeah, well, I, I think th that this was put on there. Um, as a procedure for us so that an, an, if a grant is being applied for that a, a document or whatever would be filled out and we would know about it other than the night we have to vote on it that type of a thing uh, I mean if the police department is going to ask for a grant I mean be nice if we knew about it before um, it was a, it was uh, accepted or whatever or, or granted to the department uh, by whatever agency it would it would just ha be nice to have a piece of paper saying who applied for the grant what the grant is for and that we knew about it I mean I think that's basically why that was on there so 
I was just wondering where that was at this time or if it's like you say, we're just waiting. Like I say, those two items, um, you know, obviously in any larger grants or grants that require, you know, matches, you know, we are bringing those to the city um, of any significance. Some of the routine ones, you know, if that's the desire of the council to do that, you know, we can certainly, you know, bring some of the small ones too if, if that's the desire to do that. Um, it would not be for the council to necessarily approve applying for the grant, but more of a notification that we've applied for a DWE patrol or we've applied for a, um, you know, distracted driver patrol or that Correct. type of thing. Yeah. yeah. It could be made just part of a routine report, theoretically. Mm -hmm. right? <coughs> that's it. Any other committee business? Councilor Bowler. We're now going to schedule the other meeting for next for our next council meeting prior to. I believe we already have. We yes. did it at yeah. six o'clock for the twenty yeah. eighth for the uh, Summit Avenue. Summit issue. Avenue yes. speed table is yeah. six o'clock next that's meeting on the twenty eighth. Yes. Right. Yep. Anything else? Okay, liaison reports. Any liaison reports? Members of council tonight? Okay. Citizens request to comment on current agenda items. This would be the appropriate time on our agenda <coughs> for anyone in our audience tonight who would wish to address council on any matter that is anywhere on tonight's agenda. Anyone meet that definition? No? Okay, we are to city manager report. Mr. Myers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Included in your packet for our first meeting of the month, we have the economic development report as well as the financial and operational trend reports. And for the public's viewing, both of these reports are posted on the city website as well. I'll start with the economic development report. In looking at unemployment, uh, we track uh, state data both for Laconia, Belknap County, Concord, Manchester, and the state as a whole. And we're trending anywhere from about 1.3% to 1.5% lower uh, for January of 16 as compared to January of 15. So what that means in real numbers, in January of 15, Laconia specific unemployment was running at 5.2%. The latest data shows it at 3.7%. And for Belknap County, again, it was 4.8% a year ago, January, tracked at 3.4%. So some significant improvements over where we were uh, a year ago. On the second page of that report, you'll have the first month in for our consumer Price index urban, uh, one of our tax cap calculation numbers. So inflation uh, through our tracking mechanism, uh, through provided by the federal government, ran at 1.4 percent for the month of January. A couple of partnership items there of upcoming uh, workshops and opportunities that the public can certainly sign up and, and take advantage of there as well. Uh, the other report that's in your packet is the financial and operational trends. I'll start at the top of the first page of that report. It is page 36 in your packet. Uh, the first item there is the net uh, gain in construction value from the building permit report. That's the second component that we utilize in our tax cap calculation. This number at currently at 30.3 million is up 1 million from the previous month. It runs on an April 1st to a March 31st assessing year, which is tied into a uh, state schedule for that. So we have just the month of March to complete. Uh, and again, we're currently at $30 million in a net gain in new construction value. Last year, again, one, we're one month short of being complete, was at $29 million. So we're a million over where we were, where we ended up last year. Typically, the February and March uh, months historically have not been strong months for building permits. So uh, we will see what happens, but I'm not expecting any major change on that number over the next month. Uh, Fire and Rescue and Police Department both continue to be uh, busy in their calls. Our public assistance data is there on the bottom of page one. We're trending a little bit higher than we were last year at this time, but consistent with where we were in calendar year. Um, I'm sorry, fiscal year 14 and 13, so no major issues there. Uh, nothing particular that we can point to that's driving that. It's just at certain times of year and certain conditions, um, we, send to, we tend to see the need and request for um, assistance on that. Our property tax collection uh, continues to remain strong, both in terms of dollars and percent collected. Uh, same thing for our motor vehicle registration. So we're running uh, about a, a $140,000 
dollars ahead of the same pace last year. We had increased our budgeted amount from last year's figure of $2.175 million to this year's $2.325 million. So we increased the amount we anticipated collecting by $150,000, and we're at 71, a little over 71 percent of uh, target. So again, that is a strong number there. Uh, I think the final information that uh, really has some relevance here would be on the last page of the report, page 40 of 76 in your packet, and it would be the uh, boat taxes. It looks like we might have the opportunity for an early spring this year, so we encourage folks to come down and visit our city clerk's office, and they can register their boats right here at City Hall, and that is uh, works for anybody who wants to register a boat in New Hampshire, not just Laconia residents, but the city clerk's office can <coughs> register all New Hampshire boats here and you can leave with your sticker the same day rather than having to wait for them to come back in the mail and the other item is the uh, winter storm cost summary for February not a lot of major accumulation but we did have a lot of just uh, nuisance icing and freezing and slushing and concern about storm drains and flooding so we did have some hours in there um, uh, again so far been a mild winter you can see that the balance across our three winter maintenance accounts which includes our materials our outside contractors and our overtime we budget a total of 445,500 for those three items and uh, expended to date is 263 and some change, leaving us a balance on hand at the end of February of 181,000 plus. So in decent shape for the winter maintenance um, so far year to date. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for the manager or comments? Nobody tonight? Wow, your lucky day, I guess. <laughs> Move on quickly. It hasn't snowed. <laughs> Okay, we're on to new business then. First item under new business, which would be on page 41 of your packet, is regarding the intermunicipal agreement with the town of Belmont for the services of the fire chief. And I believe on page 42 of your packet is the first page of the proposed agreement that the council authorized at our last meeting the construction of and that is a four-page document, and the the, um, the the second page of which contains a significant change in correction. There is a small correction on page one, which is a misspelling of the word council in about the fifth line. Yeah. Um, we have the See wrong kind here. of council there. Yeah. And then there is a significant correction to item seven on the and I'll get to we'll get to that in a minute which was the correction was distributed tonight to you to you tonight as a separate piece of paper mm -hmm. and then so the agreement itself runs through page 45 and then pages 46 and page 47 of your packet is a uh, is addressed in a secondary motion which has was which regarding our acknowledging that there was a potential conflict of interest on the lawyers parts on this whole thing because mm -hmm. of serving both communities that sort of thing so we'll get back to that as well okay so I will uh, having said that I will uh, recognize the city manager please to uh, bring us up to date on where we stand on this agreement thank you mr. mayor uh, so the town of Belmont had the original agreement that was in your packet on the select board agenda last Monday night and they approved it unanimously. Uh, so we do have signed copies in the building. Uh, it came to us, it was included in your packet. Um, it came together fairly quickly and we had one last minute uh, recommendation from uh, Primex, who is our city's liability insurance carrier, and the mayor alluded the starts in paragraph seven. And if the original document uh, basically said the town shall provide liability insurance to protect itself and its officials, and it went on to kind of do a laundry list of occurrences where it'd be protected. And the legal counsel with our insurance carrier thought that by listing so many items, it <coughs> might open us up to someone saying, well, you didn't list this one. Obviously, you didn't mean to, or you didn't list that one. So in a what I consider to be a rare occasion, the lawyers actually recommended fewer words than more words, and they changed kind of the laundry list down to be <laughs> yeah. and employees while in the scope and course of official duties. 
as an all-encompassing rather than trying to cover every occurrence. So that's the only change to the document. In speaking with the town administrator <coughs> today, I indicated that I was bringing both the spelling item, which we could handle as a housekeeping, but this one is a little more substantive, that I, would re that I suggested to her and she concurred that it go back to her board again, which would meet next Monday, and just ratify that language, because I think that's subs you know, substantial in nature more than just routine. So that's the understanding that I've got with the town administrator in Belmont, that uh, if it's a approved tonight, it'll go back to the select board just to amend that one section of the language, and that way both documents have a, the same up and down vote with the same language, and we think that's important. Their intent, if it's approved tonight, and they ratify the change to the language, um, would be to be then appointing uh, Chief Erickson as Belmont Chief uh, at that same meeting next Monday night in Belmont. So I would note for our audience uh, tonight, this is a one-year agreement. Uh, between the city of Laconia and the town of Belmont to provide fire chief services for their uh, town for their fire department and for that year we would we would receive compensation from the town of Belmont of $78,750 for those services in addition to that we would also there's provision two other provisions cost related provisions in here uh, items five and six on the second page in addition to the $78,000 we would receive 25 percent of the cost of operating the fire chief's vehicle including maintenance and repairs over that year from them and to remind everyone that 25 percent number comes from an analysis that was made that if you combine the total calls of the Belmont Fire Department with the Laconia Fire Department over an annual basis, we are anticipating that their number of calls percentage of the total would be about 25%, and hence that 25% number. And then the second, the other monetary provision is that we would also receive 25% of the cost reimbursed from them of the fire chief's professional education and certification expenses which are would be approved in advance by each municipality as i said earlier the term of the agreement would be for one year and that the agreement shall automatically renew thereafter in one year increments except upon a 30-day written notice by either of the parties presented to the other party upon vote of the representative governing body so both parties have, a, in effect, a 30-day out that the agreement would automatically renew in lieu of that for another year. Okay, everybody got that? And there's also provision in here, Mr. Mayor, that allows for us to, uh, in, um, t for us to notice them as to what the price for the uh, salary and the benefits is, because that number will increase. So rather than just put a, an inflator to it, we'll provide them an actual number, which will be the basis for the contract when it renews. So it's not a flat number at the $78,000 figure. So we are being asked to approve this agreement tonight and to also authorize the city manager these are two different motions to execute the waiver the agreement on the waiver of conflict agreement on behalf of the city that i mentioned earlier that's in your packet so before we get to any voting uh questions or comments councillor Lippman. i think uh taking a, a step in the direction of regionalization of um so commend folks for for doing that first of all um, in, in terms of the uh, the importance of the f sort of the first new attempt at doing some regionalization of being successful I guess I'd like to get some of their metrics of success so we know whether um, both parties are feeling like it's achieving the benefits that we're gonna get some periodic reporting on and at some point looks like we have to take a according to number 10 before it's renewed we have to take a vote on it um, just you know I, I think it's really a, it's sort of a first test at trying to get more of that going in the region and <coughs> so just interested in how we're gonna 
monitor it and report on it? That, that, that's a great question, and we do want to be monitoring and hopefully the success of it so that then if, if this proves successful, whether it expands to other areas across municipal services or further steps within the fire service, as we already have a great dispatch system in, in place that's regional, we already have a, a you know, mutual response in place that communities are automatically responding to each other's structure fires and doing station coverage. So we see this as, as, as the first step, a kind of step, you know, sticking the toe in the water um, and hoping to grow upon that. I know Chief Erickson, if this is approved, will be be you know, before the Belmont Select Board um, as requested and, and working through budget time with them. We certainly will provide those similar updates here to the Council, you know, maybe in, in written format and then, you know, in, in person on an as-needed basis. Um, you know, I've been contacted by a, a person whose name I won't mention at this point who has in, been actively involved in municipal uh, services um, in a number of levels for years and is a huge proponent of regionalization and actually reached out and contacted uh, both Gene Bowden in, in Belmont and myself here to uh, say this is really groundbreaking and, and it, when you look at it in New Hampshire it, it really is and he offered his services uh, both parties willing to come in and monitor and report and kind of use this as a test case from day one so I, I'm personally excited that someone of his caliber will come in and be able to help frame this and, and get those you know, matrix for us and, and document and, and look for, you know, maybe offer some opportunities that we can expand upon it if it makes sense to both communities and both governing bodies. So um, we're happy to report back because we think that uh, if successful, this will breed future successes across departments. Follow up, Councilor Lemon. Yeah. So, I mean, I think in like in a performance <coughs> evaluation situation, it's always better if you set your goals so that when you get to the end point, you can decide. So, it, it, you know, not that we necessarily need to, as a council, be involved in it, but I'd like to see some goal setting as to defining what constitutes success at year one so that there's an agreement going into it as to, you know, what, what constitutes success. Okay. That mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. For the comments, questions, Councillor Hamill. Uh, you know, just going along with what uh, <coughs> Council Lippman said, uh, as far as tracking this, um, I think it's important for both communities to track this as far as expenses go, so that uh, we know that both communities are. are I don't want to. I don't know if you want to say getting a sh fair shake at it, but uh, that the expenses are uh, admirable to both places. Yep. And that's a great point because obviously, you know, while I'm looking to to support regionalization, right. you know, my first focus is to Laconia. Right. So when we factored that's in the compensation numbers, as I'd shared with the council, um, this is additional workload, and, and I will be bringing forward a change to the compensation plan to reflect um, the additional salary increase that will be coming for both the chief and the assistant chief. Um, within that, though, those figures were already what was included as a base for the number calculated for Belmont, also including our not to exceed rate of 12 point whatever that uh, percent for health insurance come July 1. So we factored in all numbers for the fiscal year that begins July 1 and a compensation increase for those two employees um, into it. Beyond there, the maintenance on the vehicles is easy. We track them by vehicle anyway right now. And the accreditation and certification, professional enhancement, those are very easy to track as well. But absolutely, we want to make sure that um, you know, that everything is documented and both sides are, are on board with the numbers because, you know, if it works, then there's nothing better than a success story to say, see, not see, but look at how we made this work and where else can we take this to and <coughs> build that trust and confidence in each other. Okay, thanks. Further comments, questions? Okay, a motion would be in order then to approve the intermunicipal agreement with the Town of Belmont to share administrative services of the fire chief as outlined in the agreement presented to you tonight as amended. Moved so by Councillor Hamill, seconded by Councillor Bullock. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving the intermunicipal agreement with Belmont as amended? Please raise a hand. We have five votes in the affirmative, and that agreement passes. Next up, a motion would be in order, and this in the packet again refers to the 
there's any questions about this it's pretty pretty plain I think this is on page 46 and 47 having to do with uh, acknowledgement that there is potential conflict of interest on the lawyer front there mm -hmm. okay. yes. it, it, just for the record I mean this basically says that both communities typically use Mitchell Municipal Group for their legal representation Belmont did use attorney Paul Fitzgerald for this so we we did have separate attorneys, even though we both went into the agreement In this case. With, with the same. And it just says that <coughs> sometimes they represent Belmont, and we just legally need to disclose that. So I would look for a motion to authorize the city manager to execute the agreement and waiver of conflict of interest agreement on behalf of the city with regard to the Belmont fire services. Moved by Councilor Bullock, seconded by Councilor Doyle. Any discussion of authorizing the city manager to sign that document? All those in favor, please raise a hand. We have five votes in the affirmative, and that is also approved. Okay, item two on your agenda tonight for new business is premature, and we're going to pass over that. Uh, you will note on page 48 on the opening page of that there's a memorandum that says that this agreement was approved by the airport authority on February 18th and in fact the, the airport authority did not meet during the month of February so the, <laughs> <laughs> the airport authority has not in fact approved this agreement yet it's merely a formality but it still needs to be done and it will be done later this week so this will be put off two weeks uh, to be put on our agenda at that time. Okay. Be, uh, just to get it off our agenda in order uh, to subject to the airport authority voting it that we're. I'm not sure we can do that. Uh, we we talked about that, but whether or not legally it has to be literally approved by the airport, the airport authorities under the assumption that they literally have to approve it. Understood. First. Okay, still under new business, item three. I'll refer you to page 66 through 68 <coughs> in your packet. This is the first reading of resolution 2016-04 relative to authorizing the city manager to accept and expend grants on behalf of the city in the amount of $9,989.76 for the Laconia Police Department step patrols. And where do we find out here? Step means now sustained traffic enforcement patrols. Um, <laughs> and to schedule a public hearing on March 28, 2016 during the regular city council meeting. So a copy of the resolution itself is on page 68. Uh, again, that's resolution 2001604, resolution relative to authorizing the city manager to accept and expend grants on behalf of the city in the amount of $9,989.76 for Laconia step patrols and we need to okay so before we get to making motions here any questions for the uh, the, the chief in attendance tonight for the chief or the manager about this matter mm -hmm. we'll be passing this on first reading tonight and scheduling a public hearing None. Okay, so first motion would be to to uh, suspend Council Rule 29 F1 and move the reading of this resolution in its entire in its entirety and to be read by title only. Can I have a motion to that effect, please. Councilor Hamill, second by Councilor Bear. All those any discussion? All those in favor of reading by title only, please raise a hand. We have five votes in the affirmative, and that is approved. Next up, then, is a move on first reading <coughs> of resolution 2016-04, a resolution relative to authorizing the city manager to accept and expend grants on behalf of the city in the amount of $9,989.76 for Laconia step patrols. 
and to schedule a public hearing on March 28, 2016 during the regular council meeting. Moved by Councilor Bullock, seconded by Councilor Bear. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise a hand. Thank you. We have five votes in the affirmative, and that motion carries as well. Next up, we have a request to for amendments to hours of operation for food vendors and beer tents for Motorcycle Week 2016. That is on page 69. And I believe, uh, according to the memorandum here, this is something that we approved last year. Uh, and there were no issues with it and so what we're being asked tonight is to approve the same policy and procedure for uh, this coming motorcycle week Are there any comments questions discussion of this item okay so I would accept then a motion please to extend the hours of operation for food vendors from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. for motorcycle week 2016 Councilor Doyle makes the motion, seconded by Councilor Bullock. Any discussion of that motion? All those in favor, please raise a hand. Five votes in the affirmative. That is approved. Would now entertain a motion to approve beer tents that have been issued a license from the city to open beginning Friday, February 10th for Motorcycle Week 2016 with an additional licensing fee of $50 that is consistent with all other vendors opening on Friday. I'd like to make that motion, but can we change February to June? <laughs> February. Did I say February? Yeah. <laughs> Mine says June. Mine says June. But Ed said I May said February. 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 <laughs> yeah, let's make it let's make it June. Thank you for catching that. What are you? All right, we're gonna we're gonna say that this is motorcycle week is in June, not in February. All right, so we have a motion by Councilor Doyle, seconded by Councilor Boldick, um, and any discussion? All right, all those in favor of allowing beer tents to operate on Friday, June 10th of this year, uh, in, with the addition of a $50 licensing fee for that day, please raise a hand. Uh, five votes in the affirmative, and that is approved. Thank you. Okay, item five. Item five was not in your packet, and I believe that resolution was distributed to you separately tonight and should be a loose piece of paper on your, on your desk. Uh, this is resolution... Let's see. This is the one for $8,000. Yeah. See it. Mm -hmm. I think the most of you have it in your packet. There were a couple of packets that oh, were missing. Oh, there were a couple of packets that didn't have it. Is right, I it? think. Oh, okay. I guess I was one of the lucky Special ones. people. Special people didn't get Ooh. this in their packets. Okay, so the first, first one is the resolutions aren't numbered, so that's why I'm making sure I have the right one in front of me. The first one would be the one that does not refer to New Hampshire. This is the federal one, and it's the amount under the now therefore that would be not to exceed $8,000. Is that number in the resolution itself? 2015, 2020. Yes, it is. The number five, the $8,000 purchase. Well, I don't even have that one. I don't, think I have I don't get that one either. Oh. You got it? Okay. All right, I'm sorry. Don't All right, this is a request to schedule a public hearing on March 28th during the regular city council meeting to authorize the city manager to expend equitable sharing agreement funding from the U.S. Department of Justice in an amount not to exceed $8,000 for the purchase of surveillance equipment in accordance with guidelines of the Department of Justice. And it is resolution 2015-22. Everybody get that? If you have your excuse me, if you have your packets, it was a last minute addition, so it's go to the, the very last two pages and they're not numbered symmetrically. So the we're doing the second page to the last right now should say eight thousand dollars. Thank you. Sorry for the confusion. And the reason this is dated is resolution two thousand fifteen dash twenty two is because this resolution was approved originally in two thousand fifteen. 
I recall, and we're approving it again tonight as a matter of technicality. Is that we did. We did everything properly. It was a first reading, went to a public hearing, second reading, it was in the newspaper. And just in reviewing it, the language uh, admittedly was very general in nature and it said public hearing regarding the acceptance of Department of Justice funds. And it needed a little bit more detail to sort of err on the side of full advertising as to what it is so that somebody reading the ad could be able to discern what it was. We are revisiting these two to then re-advertise, to then come back to you in two weeks for another vote. Okay, now, so we're approving this on first reading tonight and scheduling a public hearing, is that what we're doing? I think you're gonna, you're gonna take a vote to read by title only. Okay, and so then we need to go through that formality. Yes, All right. So the first motion would be in a, a uh, in order would be a motion to read resolution 2015-22 by title only. May I have that motion please? Councilor Baer, seconded by Councilor Hamill. Any discussion? All those in favor of reading by title only, please raise a hand. We have five votes in the affirmative and that is done. Next up would be to approve on first reading and schedule a public hearing on March 28, 2016, during the regular City Council meeting for Resolution 2015-22, a resolution relative to authorizing the City Manager to accept funds previously received from the Department of Justice. Can I have that motion, please? Councilor Bolick, seconded by Councilor Baer. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of adopting this resolution on first reading and schedule the public hearing, please raise a hand. Mm -hmm. Five votes in the affirmative, and that is done. I'll give that one back to you. Do you have the second one? Yeah, second which one is no that? The uh, nine. That would be the nine, nine thousand. Nine, nine eight nine one. Yeah. That has a number on it too. I don't have that number. Okay. So we'll call your attention to resolution 2015-23, a resolution relative to authorizing city manager to accept and expend funds from the state of New Hampshire Department of Justice. Again, this was approved by us in 2015, and we're reaffirming that vote by going through the process again for the st reasons stated by the city manager. So the first motion would be to approve resolution 2015-23 on first reading by title only. Can I have that motion, please? Councilor Doyle makes a motion seconded by Councilor Bullock. All those in favor of reading by title only, please raise a hand. We have five votes in the affirmative, and that motion carries. Next up would be a motion to approve resolution 2015-23 relative to authorizing the city manager to accept and expend funds from the state of New Hampshire Department of Justice in the amount of $9,891.32 and on first to pass it on first reading and schedule a public hearing to be held during the city council meeting on March 28, 2016. Now that motion, Councilor Doyle again makes the motion, seconded by Councilor Baer. Any discussion of that motion? All those in favor of adopting resolution 2015-23 on first reading, please raise a hand. We have five votes in the affirmative, and that motion also carries. Thank you. I'll return that to you. Okay, unfinished business. Page 70 in your packet <coughs> is the second reading of resolution 2016-03, which is on page 73, having to do with accepting a Department of Environmental Services Exotic Species Program grant in the amount of $6,640. Do we need to pass a resolution on reading this by title only? Yes, you got two motions there. Sorry. On page 70. Yep, page 70. All right. Uh, any discussion of this or comments or questions before we get into motions? All right. First up would be a move to a motion to waive the reading of resolution 2016-03 relative to authorizing the city manager to accept donations on behalf of the city in this case $6,640 for aquatic exotic aquatic plant control to read by 
to waive a reading of the in resolution its entirety and to read by title only. Can I have that motion? Councilor Bear seconded. Councilor Bear makes a motion seconded by Councilor Hamill. In discussion of waiving the entire reading of the resolution, please raise. Uh, in discussion, please raise a hand. For I'm ahead of myself. I'm sorry. All those in favor of waiting the re waiving the reading, please raise a hand. <laughs> <laughs> Five votes in the affirmative. We have waived the reading. Thank you. All right. So we're now we're down to the resolution itself, and we would be approving this on second and final reading. A motion would be in order to move a second reading of resolution 2016-03 relative to authorizing the city manager to accept a donation on behalf of the city from the Department of Environmental Services Exotic Species Program grant for use in Langley, Moulton, and Pickle Coves off Paugus Bay in the amount of $6,640 as presented. By Councilor Bear, seconded by Councilor um, Bullock. Any discussion of that resolution? All those in favor of resolution 2016-03, please raise a hand. And five votes in the affirmative, and that resolution is adopted. And our last piece of unfinished business is page 74. 74. Yes, on page 74, the actual ordinance begins on page 75. <clears throat> okay, this is an ordinance amendments to art amendment to Article 3 of the zoning ordinance regarding off-street parking and loading requirements, driveway, and access to bring parking requirements in conformance with federal ADA standards. Any questions or concerns or comments before we get going on the motions? Councilor Hamill. <clears throat> My question is the portion that says driveways, is that your private driveway? No. So why is drive? Because I look down through here and I don't see driveways listed in the narrative. So I'm just curious of why it's in the title. That's what the Article 3 is labeled. So the parking lots and the changes to the ADA are under Section 3 that's entitled Off Street Parking and Loader Requirements, Driveways, and Access. All right, but it has nothing to do with your nothing private to do driveway. With your private driveway. Okay. Just Joe's. It's mine, right? Yeah. <laughs> you live on Gillette Street. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're talking about amending Chapter 235 of the Zoning Ordinance, Article 3. A motion would be in order to waive the reading of this ordinance in, enti in its entirety and read by title only. Councilor Doyle makes a motion, seconded by Councilor Boldick. Any discussion? All those in favor of reading by title only, please raise a hand. Five votes in the affirmative. That motion carries. Next up, a motion would be in order to approve the ordinance amending Chapter 261 Zoning Article 3 regarding an update, an ADA update to the parking section. I have that motion. Moved by Councilor Boldick, seconded by Councilor Doyle. Okay, any discussion? Just, uh, just one quick question that I forgot to ask. Sure. Do we know how many parking spaces we might lose because of extending the lengths and stuff? Or I do not, and this, this does apply to a private entity as well. If they're going forward with doing certain things, they have to meet the ADA compliant for um, the spaces. For new con for, so you saw your chart going forward. So based on page 76, those are the number of spaces that are needed to be <coughs> included in any new public parking. All right, so do, do we have, when we line downtown, for example, do we have to change the lines uh, to accommodate this, or is, is it grandfathered downtown? This is dealing with parking lots as opposed to parking spaces on municipal streets. So this is for... Um, businesses or that type of... Businesses residential, apartment dwellings, those types of things. It's indicating that if you are required to have handicapped parking, you need to make it, and you only have one space, it needs to be van accessible, meaning the extra width to it going forward. Uh, but this is basically for new 
um, new approved projects going forward. Okay. Thank you. Is that what that thing is? A, a parking now is a, a, a space and a half? Is that that extended? Yeah. It is. It's basically saying if a van has to open the side door and a lift for uh, a, a <coughs> for a wheelchair accessible, they need the space to come out so the lift can go up and down to go into do, it. Do all the parking spaces have to have that, or just a certain one? Just a handicap. They, based on the parameters, new going forward would have to contain at least one. So if you were only required based on the square footage of your business and the number of spaces required, if you were only required to have one handicap spot you must make it a van accessible. If you, based on your usage, you're required to have three handicap spots, I believe you have, the numbers are there, but you have to have at least one of those as a van accessible. The other two could be the traditional spots. <coughs> Further questions, comments? Okay, we have a motion on the floor, I believe. Is that correct? Yep. Yep, okay. We're ready to vote. All those in favor of adopting the amendment to uh, Chapter 235 of the City Ordinance regarding Zoning Article 3, please raise a hand. We have five votes in the affirmative, and that change is approved. We have no nominations or elections tonight. Uh, council comments? Councilor Bear. I have two. Two. Uh, Two shout-outs, one to the Laconia Police Department, to the chief and all of his men for the recent drug bust we had this week. It was a tremendous, and the other shout-out to Armin, uh, congratulations on your son's oh, thank you. uh, ceremony and uh, award in uh, Africa, wasn't it? That's correct, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Proud Papa. Yep. Any other council comments? Okay, we do have need for a non-public session tonight, Councilor Bear. Oh, goody. You'd be happy. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so I would ask for a motion to enter non-public session under RSA 91A colon three paragraph two under item D, consideration of the acquisition, sale, or lease of real or personal property, which if discussed in public would likely benefit a party or parties whose interests are adverse to those of the general community. Uh, that motion please, Councilor Bullock, seconded by Councilor Bear, who is thrilled to do it. And I would ask the clerk please call the roll on this vote. Councilor Bullock? Yes. Councilor Littman? Yes. Councilor Bear? Yes. 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 Okay, we are in non-public <coughs> session as of uh, 843. Mayor, any business after? I wouldn't think so. Order.